So you're gonna have to describe all that's going on there when you. Hey, that's don't tell me how to do my job. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a lot. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Classy Redneck. I am Cory Reynolds, the Classy Redneck. This is my counterpart, West Virginia. Hi everybody. And we've got a insanely crazy episode tonight. Very special. Man. Mostly special because somebody sent me $60 to cover the cost of it. <laughs> but uh, no, tonight we had a uh, fan of the show make a recommendation for Buddha. I don't know, Buddha Jeji, Buddha Judge. That's a Buddha Jage, I believe. J J J I G A E. Yeah. So, uh, so the the Buddha is uh, it, it, that's Korean for army base. Jigai. I would say Jigai. And the, yeah, that might be it. Jigai, Buddha Jigai. That might be it. And the Jigai is stew. So it's army stew or army base stew. So basically after the Korean War, they had a lot of uh, staples from the American GIs that they incorporated into a Korean style dish, which the one we made this evening is hot dogs, spam, pork loin, ramen noodles, rice cakes, and then there's a little kimchi, oh some tofu in there. Uh, so yeah, it's just like a big, it reminds me of gumbo, honestly. It's it's very gumbo-esque. Like they just took everything they had available, threw it into a stew pot with some local spices. Don't forget the mushrooms. Oh yeah, there was a, what was that one? Enoki? Two, three different kinds. Of en enoki mushrooms. Enoki mushrooms. And king and oysters, right? King oysters, yep. It's like the Koreans made a dish based on my pantry as a child. And then to pair it, we went with a... Korean sake. So this is a rice wine. We've busted it open and are drinking it like a beer, but apparently we probably shouldn't be because this is basically half a bottle of high octane wine. 16% alcohol by volume. So by the end of this episode, we'll probably be... Uh... They shouldn't have shaked it. Drink, drink as fastly as... as fastly. I'm assuming this is like... Uh, <laughs> You're gonna get some high quality this, footage. Sorry, guys. This ahead. looks like 50. Does anybody else see this as 50? Yeah. I see 50. I don't know. It's a 50 in sake. A 50? 50. 50. 50 seju. Yeah, down here, the fine print, it says 50 seju is brewed with quality rice and special selected herbs. Oh shit, that is 50? That's what it says right there. All right then. Enjoy the excellent wine. I didn't know I could read Korean, but apparently I can. Fantastic. 50. Enjoy the excellent wine with fantastic mixture of soft and pure flavor. Those are the tasting notes. Soft and pure, huh? Mm, I'm really getting the softness. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's like... The pureness comes later. <laughs> it's like drinking a pillow. I feel like I've had better sake. <laughs> this is Korean sake, though. Uh, I also feel like by the time we get halfway through a bottle, it's gonna be the best sake we've ever had. Yeah, this will be good shit. Whee! Give me another 50 so I can have a full 100. What you were told to pair it with was not a wine. This was your compromise. You were told to pair it with a Korean beer. Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, the, the person that uh, sent us this recommended we pair it with a Korean beer. And I said, "What? what is this show? Uh, I'm pairing wine with food. Um, <laughs> so we went with rice wine, which is, I feel like, a good compromise. Oh, man. Well, I'm excited to dig into this. I haven't I haven't tried any of it yet. Yeah, I'm trying to let it cool because it was, I mean, literally boiling like a few minutes ago. So this is like a Korean awesome. hot pot dish. All kinds of goodies just shoved in there. Did you mention the, uh, the three slices of American cheese that go on top of this dish? Oh, yeah. I think the ingredient rundown. Yeah, I remember if you said that or not. At the end, you top it with a couple of slices of American mm -hmm. cheese. So I got to tell you, um, when you first asked me if if I wanted to come over and try some GI stew, because that was what it was, you know, in the text, the, the letters GI, 
GI stew, gastrointestinal, and you know said that it was you know some some sort of Asian dish. I could only assume that it was going to have like chitlins and stuff in it. That was where my mind went. I was like, oh wow, we're we're really going in a different direction here all of a sudden. I mean, I guess I guess chitlins and stuff wouldn't be too far off of mm -hmm. you could top you know, it with the, the redneck uh, yeah. food concept. But yeah, I was I was a little nervous at first. So, but then again, I mean, there is spam in this, so full circle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Like I see a big old hunk of spam right on the top. This is there. normal spam. Oh, or is I got a big old. Spam? I got a big old hunk of spam. I'm eating these rice cakes right now. I am intrigued by these. They're like Oh, that yeah, was what like I wanted to try first. Yeah, I mean, they're like these little soft, uh, I mean, just like nothing. I mean, there's not really a lot of flavor to them. But no, but I like the texture. They're yeah, it's like this little mushy little, uh, you know, it reminds me of uh, Southern style chicken and dumplings. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the little, you got the little yeah. dumpling biscuit thing that's just in gravy yeah. and it's just like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you're kind of unsure about it at first. And you're thinking, is this really those like cornstarch packing peanuts? Is this the exact same thing <laughs> as what comes packed in my in my Amazon boxes? It kind of looks like it. That's what they look like dry. But yeah, taste wise, kind of like homemade dumplings. Not, not too shabby. Not too shabby. <laughs> I mean, the tofu to me is like a. Uh, it's like the little rice cakes, but I don't like the texture. I thought the tofu was really good. It takes on that chili paste and the sauce. I don't know that these things complement each other or detract from each other. It's just kind of there. We might have been better off with some Korean beer. Yeah, I've had a lot of great sakis, and I don't know if I put that on this. <laughs> put this on the list. I mean, put I mean this one on the list. It's. It's a solid okay. It's pretty sweet, but it's... I don't even know if I'd describe it as sweet. No. I, 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 I did find one thing that I think kind of works. And what it's the tofu, oddly enough. Oh, really? With the sake. All right, I'm going to hit that. Right. And... Because uh, I, I got me a little tofu right now. I guess you picked out some extra good tofu i'm not sure I, I don't think i've ever had tofu with this much flavor yeah no you're i mean i i think you're right the tofu i think the tofu and the sake you really complement each other well yeah. we ended up uh we picked a tofu that said it went well with stews and that's why we went with this tofu because we're not tofu experts in any way so our original plan we we headed to total wine last night to look for uh with all the pork products in this the hot dogs and the spam and stuff we were thinking like a light red so we were on the hunt for a willamette valley oregon pinot noir mm. and uh we found one and then we get to the end of the aisle and we come across this bulgarian pinot noir and we're like oh yeah i mean who I mean, wouldn't pair what bulgarian bulgarian pinot noir with what Bulgarian American doesn't GI love Korean, Korean food? Stew. Right. Yeah. But everybody knows the Bulgarians love Korean food. You can't you can't walk down the main streets of Bulgaria and not trip over a Korean restaurant. What what are they known for for food? Bulgarian. Bulgarian. Yeah, probably Bulgarian food. Sausage. Um, well, I mean, lots maybe of, maybe blood. Of, That's where Dracula's from, isn't it? Just blood. Bulgaria. If you know any other Bulgarian Pinot Noirs, comment below. Tell us your favorite Bulgarian <laughs> Pinot Noir. Hmm. A slight chill on this. We have serving temperature here about 45. Whatever our fridge is at. I think it's at 45 right now. Bulgarian. Dang, I'm good. Still got it. Bulgarina. Bulgariana. And how would you pronounce that? Wow. Bulgariana. Isn't there a rap singer named Bull? From the Danube Brianna? Plain. So I'm, I'm looking at the bag and it says cherry, cocoa, spice, tobacco, and new French oak. Ah, uh, French oak. Not a huge nose on it. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that too. It's really light on the nose. 
So a couple of classy redneck episodes ago, you were tasting something, um, one of the ones you did solo. Um, you were tasting a, a red wine and the notes said uh, that it supposedly had uh, hints of wintergreen. Mm. And you were looking for it and you were saying you couldn't really find it. I am getting wintergreen on this. You're picking up the wintergreen in this though, huh? But that wasn't on the tasting notes, was it? I don't recall mm. that. So like a minty taste? Herby. Uh, yeah, like like a more of a strong evergreen. Maybe not wintergreen, evergreen. That, that might be what I'm thinking of. Evergreen, not wintergreen. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the Schenectady episode, I think. That's pretty recent, wasn't it? Yeah. With yeah. pizza? Yeah, the pizza in Schenectady. Yep. That's what it was. Yeah, evergreen. Sorry. Wintergreen, evergreen. Like I said, I've been up since 1 30. So. Fair enough. No, I could see that. Yeah, I mean, because I remember drinking and thinking, what the hell does evergreen taste like? like never chewed on a tree limb out in the woods so yeah I mean that's that's the biggest thing I, I get I get a lot of the evergreen a little bit of the cocoa it's very dry it is pretty dry what about you what did you uh, think that was the dryness was like the big takeaway for me yeah a little drier than most pinots I've had mm -hmm. actually yeah it is jammy yeah not not really fruity at all mm -hmm. maybe like a hint of like dark cherry. I didn't get any of the cocoa. See, I feel like it tastes cocoa a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think the nose has opened up a little more now that it's warm up a little bit. Kind of warmed up, yeah. It's a little fruitier than... <laughs> I'm just getting the evergreen stronger. <laughs> oh, really? In the yeah. nose, even? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe the on second sniff, maybe the uh, that that kind of dark cherry stuff is coming through a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like a dark cherry kind of. The I'm question guessing... is, how does Bulgarian Pinot Noir pair with Spam in Korean stew? It pairs better with the stew than than the sake did. I I will really? say that. That is intriguing. It's definitely a unique Pinot. It's all about that terroir. Oh, that is good though. Together? Very, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's kind of a, you know, I, th I think a, a commonality is like there, there's some earthy tastes in both of these that, you know, immediately bring them together. And then like the little bit of spice and salt that you got going on in the stew is cut by the acidity you got going on. Plus the, the dryness, you know, kind of helps to smooth everything over. Yeah, and it's not like, a, like the soup's not real spicy. Like I don't like doing like really spicy stuff with higher tannin wines. And this is very low tan, or pretty low tannin, pretty low spice. So I think it's it's a it's a good fit. It's not, you know, like I always think when I have something spicy with with a high tannin wine, it feels like, you ever drink coffee with something spicy? You know, it's just like, oh, it's just horrible. Oh yeah. Bitter? Yeah, it just, it doesn't work. And it's, it's the same to me with high tannin wines. So. Yeah, yeah, you definitely need some more sweetness to go with that spice. Yeah, but even though, I mean, this isn't, I wouldn't describe this as sweet, but it's definitely. Yeah, no, no, For if, if this was a tannin. spicier stew, yeah. then a sweeter, you know, Kind of what we would think of as you know an american pinot noir would have been the play yeah yeah like the jamier uh not to say that it wouldn't also work with this yeah. stew, but i mean i think it would i think i think she was definitely in the right direction by getting the the will of man but i think this one still works too yeah yeah so another question would you make this do again i mean it's good it's a, i mean it's it's really flavorful like the, I mean, the thing that concerns me is probably the sodium level. To be honest yeah. with you. Like, no, who's gonna win the tofu challenge? Is it gonna be Fitty. the standing contender? The fit? Did you say Fitty? Fitty. <laughs> this is good tofu. I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I've never said that about tofu in my life. I love tofu. Did you try the really tofu shrunk. with the uh, with the Bulgariana yet? I did. It blows it away, right? The wine does. I kind of preferred the sake, actually. I, I mean, the 
sorry, I should clarify, the, the wine completely just destroys the flavor of the tofu. Oh, you can't, you can't. Yeah. It's, it, it overwhelms it. Yeah, it's just so like. What, what worked with the sake was the, the subtle, you know, subtle flavors and soft and pure. Soft, pure. Thanks everybody for joining. If you got any crazy food and wine combos that you want to see, please drop it in the comments. Also, please be sure to click like, subscribe, and ring my bell for notifications. <coughs> Great, I have to edit it out, I'm dying.